Hello everybody and welcome to Hard for Games. I'm Tony. I'm Bobby. And we've been talking about N64 disk drive content for quite some time. The N64DD. That's right. So for those of you that are unaware, you know, obviously it is an add-on for the Nintendo 64. It's pretty rare. It came out in Japan only. It was a failed system. Very few pieces of software for it. But over the last couple of years, people have been taking a lot of interest in it. Yep. But how the heck do you play it without actually purchasing one of these the expensive, very expensive units? units yeah, yeah, exactly. So we wanted to talk about alternatives uh, for emulation right. on the PC, flash cart, and Mac that right. will allow you to have a An mostly full yeah. Yeah, N64 DD experience, but without actually having to invest in right. the hardware, which right. is kind of difficult for most people. So uh, what should we start with here today? Let's start with the PC because most people have it, and exactly. that's what most people will be using. Mm -hmm. So let's... Let's do it. Yep. And we'll end with Mac. So you could just see how awful your life will be if you're like me and happen to have a Mac and want to emulate the DD. Right. So cheers, cheers. to you. Cheers to me. If we ever disagree. F you, cheers to me. All right, so to start things off, we're going to tell you a little bit about your home base for 64 disk drive emulation, and that is 64dd.org. Right. <clears throat> this is a site uh, created and run by Luigi Blood, whose name you might recognize if you watched the Metal Jesus Rocks video right. that right. I was on. Uh, he helped us out quite a bit, and he is kind of one of the 64 disk drive godfathers, if you right. will. He's, he's like, spearheaded quite a bit with this project. Exactly. I, he's he, helped you out quite a bit. Helped, and then mm -hmm. the whole group in general, he's helped out a lot. Yeah, so he runs this site. He's also responsible for the emulators right? as well. So we're definitely very thankful uh, to him for that. So to start off with, you know, you're on your 64dd.org site. And when you take a look around, just to give you some, some basics, you have a download, you have games, tutorials. Let's start off with the games. We have retail, and you can see here that we have all the games that were released. Um, we have a clean dump and an original dump. And what's the difference between those two, just so we know? Sure, clean dump means everything was wiped in terms of the saves. The original dump was like, all right, I have this disc, there's some save files on it, there's some user content uh, that's still on there. Also notice here it has a 64DD IPL, which is like the firmware, essentially, uh, for the Nintendo 64 disk drive. You're definitely gonna wanna download that. Right, or else it won't work. There's also development, and you're gonna see a bunch of stuff here that was never released. Right, so it's new things that you'll probably never heard of, or if you're into the scene, this is the things that are different yeah. than what everybody else has. This is what interests us, basically. Exactly, this is our this yeah. is our page, right? And wait a minute. Some software from Hard for Games. Oh we're famous. We got them views. Mm -hmm. We got them internets. Internets. We do. We do have them in internets. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we have our cartridge ports. Now, here's we're going to get back to these, but these cartridge ports were put together by. I'm hope I'm not botching the same, but uh, Zoin Kitty. Zon Kitty. Zoin Kitty. I'd Zoin say. Kitty. Uh, he's another one of the Godfathers, if you will, of the 64 disk drive mm -hmm. community. And basically, what these are, they are dumps that were converted to standard N64 ROMs, which means that you so can- So that they work with regular 64 emulators, right? Exactly, and that would probably be your best and easiest bet. However, if you wanna play a game uh, that was not maybe converted to a cartridge port or a cartridge ROM, right. um, we're gonna kinda of show you how to do that. Right. So starting off, what do we do? Well, first off, we go to the n64dd.org, which brings us here. We go to downloads, and for our needs and purposes, we're gonna wanna download the Project 64 DD, uh, the build right here. And there's a latest build here of December 2016. You click that, it downloads, and it goes to your specified download folder. And then any other games that you wanna download, like we said, be sure to download the IPL or else it won't work. You're gonna need that, it's kind of important. Open up the emulator folder. We have Project 64, it's an application. Just double click and it loads. There's a couple different ways that you can load your ROMs. You can either go file, open ROM, or you can just drag and drop. Hmm. It works pretty well. Uh, we found that if you Try to load a different ROM like a game. It'll ask you where that IPL is. But if you just want to have it work right out the gate, 
just load the IPL into the emulator, the first thing, and it works. So it takes a couple seconds for it to load up. Now it knows where the IPL is pointed at, so all the other games will use it. So the IPL is loaded, you can go file, end emulation, or just drag and drop over it. Now that the IPL is loaded, we can load Doshin and drag and drop. And it's gonna load the IPL first, and it's good. Now it's loading Doshin right now. Mm -hmm. So one of the nice things about utilizing Project 64 and actually using the 64DD dumps, the .ndd files, is you can do like cartridge swapping, which right. I could be wrong, but I don't think you can do that with the cartridge ports. Right. Um, but some N64DD games require you to swap between discs. So, Doshin and Mario Paint. Yeah, yeah, like Doshin 2 it like makes you swap back and forth between the first game and the second game um, quite a bit. So how do you do that in this? Pretty simple with this, I mean, once it requests you to do it, only when it requests you to do mm -hmm. it, you just go system, swap disk. Or you can use the hotkey, control D. Easy. Easy. Control that D. Control that D. Uh -huh. Put a helmet on that soldier, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's right. But you know what I'm talking about, though. We don't, though, because we both have children now. Um, Ouch. <laughs> There are some other details regarding this emulator. For example, there are certain plugins you're gonna want uh, to set up for specific games that are included in the download. Right. But you're gonna wanna read the tutorial. Right, it, the tutorial explains everything for you, so we're not gonna go in too much detail for it because there is a tutorial, like we said. Exactly. And it lists, for this game, you want this plugin with these settings. Yeah. So. Let the tutorial do its job, basically. Yes. Uh, with the Mac version, there is no tutorial, so that's... Tony of, is the tutorial. Yeah, exactly. We'll be your tutorial. So, next up, before I'm we... I'm gonna hold it. Yeah, go ahead. All You're right. gonna talk, I'm gonna hold. All right, go ahead and hold it. So, mm. so next up, before we get into the Mac realm, we're gonna be talking about flash carts. Now, <laughs> right here, I have a 64 drive, which is kind of a more of a niche flash cart. Uh, it's specifically meant for debugging. You can dump DD content with that, which is why I own one. Um, but you can also play DD games on it. Right. But specifically, the cartridge ports. Yeah, you can't use the, the specific disk dumps. No, not yet. There, there's supposed to be an update to this eventually where you can do that, but at the moment, you cannot. So you could use this, or for example, you could use the more popular EverDrive 64. And the great thing is, is you're, you're playing DD games on original hardware, which yeah, is yeah. so nice. You gotta love that hard for games wear. Oh yes, uh, but there are some limitations. On this, the EverDrive, you can save, but to my knowledge, you can't disk swap. Okay. It doesn't understand how to do that. With this, you can, you can save and well, you the, the PC uplink to can USB. Can disk swap, yeah, but it requires you connecting via USB to your PC and like swapping files on the SD card. So it's convoluted. You're playing. It's extremely convoluted. It's I tough. attempted to do it on my Mac and it didn't even work. So you have to have a P PC and it's not even worth it, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, most people are gonna be playing like your F-Zero Xs uh, with the expansion kit and they're so not gonna not, need- not, Yeah, it's not yeah. required. The games, there's not that many games that require the you disc swap, swap discs. Right. Exactly, so you, you know, play it on your EverDrive 64, you'll be good. If you happen to have one of these, you can have a taste for what it's like on real hardware. Just, just a tip. Just the tip. Just a uh, little bit, just to see how it feels. But right? anything beyond that is kind of, you know, play yeah. it with some friends over or something like that, but it's not like, you're, it's difficult to do, to say progress, basically. Right. Yeah. Let's move on to the Mac. To the Mac. To the Mac. Quick disclaimer about emulation on the Mac. Just so all of you know, it is still very early and very experimental. Luigi Blood had developed this just over the last couple of months, so it's very, very new. And as such, things are still kind of buggy. Now, we're gonna show you guys how to set it up properly for the state that it's currently in, but just so you know, some things just don't work, like disc cart combo games like F-Zero. Sometimes things freeze. Sometimes cursors don't show up. But again, it is being worked on, and Luigi Blood is doing an excellent job, considering that this didn't even exist prior to him. So we may do an update video in the future once the bugs are kinda smoothed over, but for now, this is how you get it set up. 
All right, so let's move on to how to do this on a Macintosh computer. Now, Macintosh. Couple, couple details here. Um, I know Macintosh. in the comments, we're gonna get a lot of, Tony, why the hell do you have a Mac? Like, oh, that's so stupid. Uh, so go ahead and, and, and yell at each other about the, the advantages of Mac and PC in the comments below if you like. I, I think actually that'd be good because it boosts up the rating of the video. But, yeah, um, and we like watching these uh, nice debates. Exactly, so moving respectful on. Respectful debates. Respectful debates. Uh, so moving on uh, with a Mac, a couple of details here. So it is definitely more convoluted. And on top of that, uh, there is saving, but there's no disk swapping whatsoever. So again, you're not really gonna be able to get far into Ocean 2. You're not gonna be able to swap between Mario Artist games, but it doesn't mean that you can't play those Mario Artist games. It's just that you can't use them to their full. You're just not getting the full taste. Exactly. First things first, you're gonna go ahead and go to uh, Lib Retro, and you're gonna go to Download section. You're gonna want to get Retro Arch for the OS X, and you're gonna go ahead and download that. Now, uh, Retro Arch is known for being a very, very flexible emulator, like emulation system, but it's kind of like an, um, an umbrella emulator. So it covers all of them? Yeah, it covers a ton of different um, systems. And it has a bunch of different cores that you plug into it. And the core, Modules, kind of, Yeah, right? exactly. Like the Coleco modules. Exactly. There yeah, you yeah. go. Uh, Segway. Segway. Watch the video above. Yeah. yeah. So uh, point being is that each one of the cores is like a sub emulator. And what you're gonna to wanna to do first and foremost is once you get this thing loaded, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and go to the online updater, go to the core updater, you're gonna see just a ton of different systems. Ignore all this crap and go right to the N64 Mupin 64 Plus. Now, if you're familiar with uh, N64 emulation on the Mac, you may recognize this emulator, but it is not the same as the normal Mupin 64 Plus. This is uh, different, okay? So you're gonna wanna make sure that you download this and you're gonna wanna go ahead and load your core. So you'd think you'd be good, but you're not. You're gonna wanna make sure that your system understands the firmware for the 64DD. So remember with Project 64, you just kind of dragged the- You dragged that, the IPL the over. The IPL right over. Um, with this, it's gonna be a lot different. Uh, okay. So what you're gonna need to do is you're actually gonna take the IPL and you're gonna put it into the system folder, but you're gonna have to rename it 64DD underscore IPL dot bin. And it's okay. gonna ask you, do you wanna keep dot bin? You're gonna say yes. You're gonna throw it right on in there. Now you'd think from here, you'd be able to- So you have to put it in the system folder. In the system folder of RetroArch. Retro Arch. Exactly. Okay. Uh, you'd think from here, you'd be able to play the N64DD games. No, mm. I loaded it up, I got error 41 basically, which means that the DD is not connected to the system okay. properly. What you're gonna have to do from here is go to Command, Menu Toggle, and make some adjustments here. Go into the options, a couple very important things. Make sure your expansion pack is enabled, because keep in mind right. if you know your history of the DD, the DD, the expansion pack was made originally for the disk drive. Big thing here, GFX plugin, make sure it's GLN64. If it isn't, it you're gonna get- work. And lastly, and very importantly, make sure your 64 DD hardware is toggled to um, on. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing is that of course, right. obviously, of course you want your 64 yeah, DD yeah, yeah. toggled on, but if you didn't know this menu existed. Right, you wouldn't even know to look for it. Exactly. And I can't even find this menu unless I load a ROM first. Again, you gotta press that menu toggle. You gotta go into the options. You gotta make sure everything is good, but there's more problems. More. And the issue is that you can't control the damn game. <laughs> I pressed every single freaking button on the keyboard and I could only find three or so that were like toggled. That were what, mapped correctly? Yeah, they were mapped correctly, like a jump, a, a punch for Mario, and, the, and a start, like a pause, basically. So I did a little bit more research. What you need is an Xbox 360 controller, but here's the kicker. It's not compatible with Mac. Right. You can't plug it in either, right? No, you can't plug it in via USB other than to charge it. Uh, because of course this is Microsoft. Right. And you're on an Apple product. So they don't they don't refuse to they refuse to talk, right? Okay. So you actually need to download a driver for this controller, okay. which we'll put a, a link to in the description below. And it still doesn't work. Because you need to actually buy a Microsoft wireless adapter. 
plug it in via USB. So again, you can't plug this in via USB. You have to plug in the Even wireless. There is a USB yeah, connection. exactly, which makes no sense. You need to plug in the wireless adapter via USB, press the sync button, press the sync button, they connect and suddenly you are in business, you are emulating the N64 disk drive and you can actually have control it. fun. Yeah, you can actually have fun. Again, keep in mind, you can save, but you cannot disk swap with this particular version. It's not that hard once you know what to do, right. but it just was orig originally for me a pain in the ass, so I wanted to kind of describe what you're actually uh, supposed to do. So if you want full capabilities, either get the actual hardware, which is pretty expensive and hard to find, yeah. or just get a PC and it works. Pretty much, pretty much if you want the full expanse. Yeah. Put in the comments below how much I suck because I use a Mac to provide Hard for Games videos for you. I slave away at these on my Mac. He's got like tear marks on the Yeah, keyboard. exactly. <laughs> People make fun of me. That is our episode for today, everybody. We hope that you enjoyed. Yeah, if you have any questions, uh, click the link below, ask in the comments, all that BS. Yeah, we love interacting with you guys. And what? Wait, wait, what, what, Tony, what, what's this? Tony, what's, what, what'd you just pull out of your pants? What's that? What's this? It's a development disc for the N64 disc drive. I think we might have some fun in store with this, hopefully. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do with it. Um, but thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you for clicking that little notification button yes. uh, near the subscribe button that alerts you of all of our videos. Tony, stick that disc in my hole. This isn't a development system, but you can technically stick it in. Tony, way to ruin it. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.